All right, so we are here at the Starfest convention with Dr. Aaron McDonald. Hello. If you could go ahead and introduce yourself and just a little yeah. bit about your background. Okay, so um, yeah, I'm Aaron McDonald. My background's in astrophysics. I did my doctorate with the LIGO collaboration, searching for gravitational waves um, from things like dead neutron stars and colliding black holes, which is awesome. Um, and uh, I actually left the collaboration before they made their detection, but that's fine. And uh, now I work as an aerospace engineer, and I also work as a consultant, um, helping writers with their science fiction, as well as coming to these and uh, teaching about the science behind science fiction. So what spurred you to go into the comic world and the science fiction world, and why did you combine that your career with that, or vice versa? Yeah, so I, um, I've always been a sci-fi fan anyway, uh, which helps. And um, while I was kind of working on my PhD thesis, I was putting off writing it. And I was like, mm, I bet I could calculate how warp drive works. So I kind of tried to calculate how warp drive works and, and did. And uh, at the same time, I was also starting to attend a lot of conventions just as a fan. And a few of them had science tracks. Not many, but a few did. And so I started giving talks at them that were very science focused, just pure like gravitational waves, astrophysics talks. Um, and then I started to get more interest. I started talking about the science of mass effect was a really big one for me because the science is so expansive and interesting in that. And I found over the years that it was a great way to reach out to people and teach science in a different way. And you get people at these conventions who they really are interested in science but don't have a background in it. And so they love being able to make those ties between their popular culture and learn some real science uh, behind it. Um, and it's great too because you see kids get engaged as well. Mm -hmm. So you were saying that you were always interested in science fiction. Is that what brought you into science in the first place? Yeah, so I never really had a real life mentor as it were as I wanted to get into science. I actually um, grew up watching the X-Files. So I had Dana Scully, and I loved I loved aliens. And for me, um, being able to see a redheaded woman, you know, don a lab coat and fight aliens was awesome. And so that's what kind of got in my head that I wanted to be an uh, astrophysicist. And no kidding, I literally found out that uh, Dana Scully had her undergraduate degree in astrophysics. I went, oh, that's a real degree. I want to <laughs> do that degree. And so there's a straight line for me between Dana Scully and becoming an astrophysicist. So yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite part of giving talks at conventions and bringing this knowledge from the science world to the outer world? Yeah, I think for me it's meeting the people. People are so engaged, they're so enthusiastic. You know, if you've been to these conventions before, you know how friendly people are, and it really is a sense of family. Um, but for me, the most rewarding thing is when I get kids come up to me afterwards. And I don't know if you saw at the end of mine, there was a girl who came up and she just said, this is great, I get to meet a real scientist, and I always wanted to be a scientist. And, and uh, you know, if people are able to see themselves in me or kids get excited about maybe becoming a scientist because they see a woman with tattoos and like, <laughs> I like tattoos and I like science and maybe I could do that one day. That's really my big reward. Yeah. What would be some of your advice for someone who's aspiring to be a scientist if they have like no idea where to start or if there's like so many options they just get overwhelmed by the choices? Yeah, I think for, uh, for young kids who maybe are going through high school or going into college, it's just ask questions and do everything. That, you know, I wanted, I started out wanting to maybe be a biologist. I learned really quickly that wasn't my thing, but I loved space. And so I started to do more space. I started to do research in space just as I went through my undergraduate career. And I was able to find stuff that clicked. You know, I ended up also with a math degree just because as I was taking math classes, it was so cool that I just wanted to learn more. So it's keeping that curiosity, keeping that enthusiasm. Um, for people who might be later career or second career, I think what it really is is, you know, don't be afraid to jump in and don't be afraid to ask for help. And people who are in science love science and are always happy to talk about it. So asking those questions and keeping that curiosity is really important. 
Now, you come to conventions. Do you have other ways of bringing your knowledge to the outside world? Do you have a website? Do you have podcasts, things like that? Yeah, so um, online I'm at Dr. Aaron Mack on Twitter, and I do a lot of science outreach on Twitter. And as well, actually last year, because of all of these conventions, I started a YouTube channel. So it's called Dr. Aaron Explains the Universe. And uh, I put out a chunk of episodes. I'm filming a bunch more now that'll be coming out later this year. And it's just short videos on the science behind science fiction. And I take questions from people they give me ideas for for new you know talks some of them are more science some of them are more science fiction but I just think it's a really you know it's a great way to reach out to people mm -hmm. um, are you going to be at any upcoming conventions in the area or across the country in the near future that you know of yet? Um, so I've done a few already this year. I did Emerald City Comic Con. I also did Awesome Con. Um, I'm here at Starfest. It looks like I'm going to be at Fort Collins Comic Con <laughs> and uh, here in Colorado as well as um, Dragon Con out in Atlanta. That's all I have now. There's a few more I'm still talking to but uh, yeah I usually do about half a dozen a year. That's fun. Nice. And um, so as far as examples and role models you mentioned Scully was one to you. Is there anyone else whether real or fictional, that's inspired you in your life, not necessarily in your career choice, but just inspired you to keep going. Yeah, yeah, um, for me it's uh, Captain Janeway. <laughs> uh, Catherine Janeway, represent. Um, <laughs> no, honestly, like, I didn't really discover Star Trek until later in life. My family wasn't into it. I didn't really have a lot of friends in school who were really into it. Um, but kind of as I went through high school and into college, um, that's kind of when Voyager was nearing its end of its run. And, oh man, I got hooked. And I just felt a connection with Captain Janeway um, to the extent that I actually dedicated my PhD thesis to her. <laughs> and, um, you know, I, for me, it's, it's, I, had, I was so lucky to find women who inspired me, even though they were fictional. And honestly, like going through graduate school, going through undergrad, being a scientist in general can be really hard and lonely sometimes. And so it's good to have mentors, real or fictional, that, you know, I will just burn out and put on a Voyager episode and go, okay, no. I can do this. <laughs> and that's really important to me. So I see the value in science fiction. I see the value of having representation, you know, for anyone in the media. If they're able to see themselves in characters and connect, it goes a long way toward, you know, pushing them and inspiring them. Right. Um, and as like a closing question, what would be some of your hopes as far as where you would like to see science go within your lifetime? Um, obviously I'd like warp drive. <laughs> that's the goal. And you know, Star Trek managed about 2060s-ish, so yeah, we're open on that. Um, but you know, I think there's so much out there. What I really like to see, what I'm excited about is more of the gravitational wave discoveries because that's allowing us to really, I use it as an analogy of almost hearing our universe, whereas we've always looked at our universe and now we have a different way of doing that. So I'm excited what we learn with that. Um, and I'm also excited with what we're learning with quantum physics and quantum entanglement and how we can start using that in our technology. So I'm curious to see where it goes and warp drive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time, thank and you. it's been a pleasure listening to your talks and hearing you inspire those around you. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thanks, have a good time. <laughs>